Saturday, nearly midnight. Well, right now it's a bewitching hour, and it's turning into Sunday, Mother's Day in the U.S., Saturday, I uh, got up and was going to go do some theater thing, you know, go and support them and help them out if I could or whatever. I had a couple more props for them. Uh, spritzer bottles to spray mist, water mist. And then there was a few things that they wanted or needed. And I said, I'll go get it. Which I did. I got one of these it's uh they had this kind and they had a cat pistol but the cat pistol cost more and the refill caps were more than these things these have what are they how many shots do they have uh three four five six seven eight eight each circle is eight shots so I figure even if some ding-dong in the decides to play with it, there might be enough left for the program. I don't know. What did that cost me? I got a couple other things, too. Uh, the rings of shots are $4, and the Wild West cap gun was $7. It's eleven dollars. They can either give me eleven dollars, or when the show's over, I'll take the gun back. They probably should give me eleven dollars. Anyway, another part of the show, the lady comes in toward the beginning of the show. This lady comes in and she has a knife in her back. Well, I found this really lightweight dagger-looking thing. It's like plastic underneath, but this is like uh, neoprene around it. I was thinking of cutting it right about here. Painting the hilt a different color or something. And at the end, hot glue a magnet. And then on the her costume, they'll have to put in like a piece of tin can or you know some kind of metal that magnets stick to they sew that on the inside of her costume so then she can just they can just put this on and it'll stick on her so it'll look like she'd been stabbed I don't know if it'll work and then for myself <clears throat> I've kind of been wanting one for a while and it's a lot noisier than I thought and it is midnight so I'm not going to squeeze him ha <laughs> ha I got one of these guys. Here we go. Mouth to beak resuscitation. <laughs> the cat does not like. He goes up to it and he looks at it. And he paws at it. And I said, unless you jump on it, you know, it's not going to make any noise. Yeah, I want to try my hand at making music with it. Someday during the day when I'm either by myself or somebody, you know, so I can make noise. Uh, I got a little trinket charm for Kim Anderson, who was my mom's last caregiver. She was a big girl like me, and uh, we both do the same kind of things. We both sing as we do our work around there. You know, when we do the dishes, we do them the same way somehow. we. My brother Richard said, you are like two peas in a pod. And we used to look at each other and laugh because she was black girl and I'm white. So I found this little metal, this little charm that goes on a charm bracelet. It has a little pea pod with two peas in it with little faces and little pink gems for their cheeks but little green peas with with little faces and they're smiling and it says best friends so I'm going to send it to her because I don't know I, sh I don't think she realizes how important she was in our 
little circle as my mom was on her way out. She always made me smile. Always made me laugh. And my brother would say, you're two peas in a pod. And he'd put his fingers like this. So later, when we, I'd see her somewhere and I'd go like this. And we'd start laughing. So she's going to get a little surprise. Made a baby bib for John Lovell's baby. I'm going to have to figure out how to send it to him. Maybe I'll ask him on Facebook. I don't know. His little baby's name is Arthur. And the bib is a hand towel, like a kitchen hand towel with a collar put on. Not unlike, where is it? This is one I made for Sebastian. See, it's a, it's a kitchen hand towel, but it's got like a little knitted neck thing. It fits over the neck. But see how big it is compared to a baby? Spencer, when he, I made some for him, when he was first wearing them, they cover his whole body. But now, it goes down to his belly. <laughs> um, and it's good for the parent, too. It's good to wipe up, spit up, or put on your shoulder for burps, or whatever. I actually have one for myself. Where is it? Oh, I don't know where I put it. I have one for myself that I made out of. What did I make it out of? Another hand towel? I think so. And I put it so I wear it when I'm eating something sloppy so my clothes don't get messed up. Works great. No one has to see it. I'm at home alone eating and making a mess. Oh, I've been having headaches and everything. I don't know. I made some donuts today. I made some for Brian. They're in another container. Tomorrow's Mother's Day, or actually today is Mother's Day, and we have a picnic planned today. We're going to go to a local park and have a picnic. Now, I don't know what all is going to be had, but when I was at Trader Joe's, I picked up a little tray of different cheeses, and they're all cheese that I don't mind eating, and I know Brian likes some of it, so I'm, at least it'll be eaten. And I bought a little bag of pita chips, like pita bread cut into little pieces and toasted. Those are pretty good, and they don't, they're not much calories. So I don't know what we're going to have. I mean, I could have bought, like, watermelon or cantaloupe or something like that. But I'm, whatever she's actually making, probably will have to use the ice uh, chunk things we have in the freezer out there anyway, so... It's not far from here, so it should be okay. I'll take my big water jug, and I have no idea. Maybe there's a playground, and Spencer can go nuts on the playground. We're going to do it uh, 11, 12 o'clock, something like that, right before Spencer has a nap. Like 11, 30, 12, 12, 30, 1. Right in there is when... He takes a nap somewhere in there. And it's a good time for all the grown-ups to take a nap, too. It'll be hot tomorrow. It's going to be like 80 degrees or something. So I open the windows at night. It's not freaking cold, but it's cool enough that I, I like it. So in the morning, I'll just shut the curtains and the windows, and it'll keep cool in here. This garage that's made into a living room is all, like, cinder block construction which keeps it hot or keeps it cool depending on how you open or close windows or what you do or don't do and there is a an air vent up there but it doesn't work wait a minute it's up there it doesn't go anywhere the bathroom has an air vent in it, and the bedroom has an air vent in it. If it gets really cold, the heat comes on. But they can turn that off, too. There's an upstairs where they go and sleep at night. They can turn the downstairs off. 
But that's why I have a little fireplace heater and I have another little standalone heater that's automatic and shuts itself off. And I have a little window air conditioner thing that rolls around and the pipe goes up to the window. So I'm okay. I'm set. I mean, I've got everything I need. It was just... I'm, I'm happy that I, I, I arranged it the way I did. But in my brain, I'm thinking, I'm tweaking my ideas, and then I want to get rid of a lot of junk. There's just, I've got stuff everywhere, and I don't like that. I want just what I need, and a good place to put it. Yep. So what else is there to say? Not a whole lot. They were adding more kitsch to the play today. Oh, such schmaltzy crap that they're adding. And it's like, this is a murder mystery spy play. And they're adding so much shit to it. They're all laughing at each other, laughing their heads off. And I'm sitting there rolling my eyes half the time. And don't know. Well, here's my coffee. I bought some instant coffee because it's a lot easier at nighttime. And my instant coffee, it'll help me go to sleep. Yes, it does. So, I guess what I'll do is powder my armpits. Go bathroom one more time, one last time for the day. Brush my teeth. Powder up. <laughs> Powder up, boys, and go to bed. <sighs> I, yeah, I don't, I'm, my brain's still going. I've got to figure out something to calm it down. Last night I listened to another book on tape in German. What was it? I don't know. I've listened to three different H.G. Wells. I've listened to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, Sherlock Holmes stuff. In German. And it's getting to the point... Well, see, I listen to it in German because my brain... If it was English, I'd be sitting there trying to pick out all the words and listen. It's German, and I only know bits and pieces. But it's starting to get to the point where I'm starting to listen. But that's okay. Maybe I'll be able to speak it if I need to sometime. <laughs> Or I can switch to French. But French always sounds like somebody's got a head cold with lots of phlegm in there. To me. I, I don't. And then uh, half the time they add S at the end of the word and they don't pronounce it. They don't say it. Like F I L S. Fees. Means daughter. And F I L is fee means son, I think. I'm pretty sure. Scott's the one that speaks French. Brian knows a few words. He knows more German. And he's learning Spanish because he's a nurse and they have to know how to communicate with people that come into the hospital. And Down here, used to be part of Mexico a long time ago and there's a lot of Hispanics. A lot. Yep, old geezers, Trumpsters in this area, there's a lot. 55 plus communities and modular mobile homes and uh, old ex-military Trump people living around here. Preppers, because this is considered the boonies. But uh, just... 15 minutes drive down the street you have Redlands which is a oh, beautiful little town there is a two universities there or one university there anyway it's it's really a cool town it has some a hundred years old houses and stuff which is really awesome someday I'm going to actually park someplace and walk down the street and take pictures of the houses so that you can see how awesome they are they're the kind, like in San Francisco, they call painted ladies. They're 
Some people have kept them in the old different colors and stuff, and some people made it more modern and just have one color house. But uh, they're awesome. I'd love to see the inside of those places. I'm starting to sweat. And I haven't even drank the coffee yet. But it's this time of night. I am always get real hot. So I sit around naked until I cool down. And I put something on and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, peeping Toms. <laughs> That's my modus. Modus operandi? No. That means your motive. That's my habit. Dagnabbit. <laughs> Oh, God. I still have to make some fudge frosting and put it in a little container for Brian's donuts. And uh, get my my act together tomorrow morning. I'll probably wear something nice looking. Because I'm sure there will be pictures taken. And I want everything to be pleasant. I'm going to try to be as nice as I can. And like any holiday or birthday as you get older, the less eventful it is, you know, no injuries or screaming or yelling, or, you know, the less eventful something is, the nicer it is and the more enjoyable it is. And I just love family time because how many people have family time anymore? No electronics, sitting and talking, maybe playing some kind of silly game and talking about things and playing around, running and twirling around. And They said that we should be able to see the northern lights. They're going to be really visible this evening, but I think we're a little far south. They said maybe parts of the south of, of uh, California you can see them. But I've seen them before when I was a kid yeah, up in Iowa. And they're interesting. So I know half the people who watch me live up north or northeast and they can see this now. And it is uh, astonishing. Nature is astonishing. And mankind should admire it, love it, treat Mother Earth. Like they used to have a, a poster that says, love your mother, and they'd have a picture of the Earth. Yeah. You know what? I've talked way too much. Yes, you have. Oh, my God. Go to bed. Okay. <laughs> Upward and onward.